today's topic is battery technologies and design uh, before start our session participants please mute your mic both audio and video over to rashikar sir पार्टिसिपेंट्स <laughs> 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 First of all, I feel very sorry for taking your time. Whenever our topic is the topic of bad technologies. So in our bad technologies, as outlined, we know five topics, sub topics: battery chemistries, that is chemistries, the chemical various chemical reactions involved in batteries. packaging and the configurations the construction of batteries and various process taking place in batteries charging discharging and also storing of energies the fourth one is how to pull up the battery life so how to extend the life of the batteries so in this support thanks we are going to present our today's session battery chemistries so battery is a source source involving the conversion of energy so when it is charged when it is charged so there is a transformation of energy from electricity to the chemical and whenever it discharges so there is a conversion from chemical to electricity so in the form it is transforming the energy so in between these two energy chemical and electricity it is transforming the energy levels from chemical to electrical and also electrical to chemical so the important uh, characteristics of the battery is specific energy and the specific power so in the diagrams in the diagram we have The specific power, specific specific power of batteries with respect to the specific energy. What is specific energy? It is the watt hours, watt hours per kg weight of the battery. That is the energy delivered by the battery. Watt hours per kg weight of the battery. Power is the watts, so only watts. The delivered capacity, delivered capacity of the battery per kg per kg weight of the battery. Specific power. So in this uh, graph, we can show the specific power with respect to the specific energy. The specific power with respect to specific energy. So by which part the specific power is greater with respect to specific energy? We can say that is a so good for our performance. Specific energy is the power of a battery that can hold. The watt hours per kg weight of the battery and specific power is able to do deliver power. So normally power is the capacity to do any work. So that is output of the battery. That is explained as specific power. That is defined as specific power. Specific energy is the total power. The total power the battery can hold. The total power. So it is power multiplied by the time. It is power. So watt hours. Watt multiplied by Time taken in hours, watt hours per kg data. Next one is energy storage capacity for various batteries. So in the vehicles, we are using various batteries, lead acid, lithium ion, alkaline batteries, lithium primary batteries. So here we can show the various storage capacity of these batteries. 
So it is different for rechargeable and also non-rechargeable type of batteries. Non-rechargeable batteries hold more energy than the rechargeables. You can say for non-rechargeable battery, they are having more energy than the rechargeable batteries, but cannot deliver high load currents. The non-rechargeable batteries cannot deliver high currents. So in this way, we can classify non-rechargeable and rechargeable batteries. To, to deliver current. So we are saying this as the power capacity. So then we can differentiate the power, power to loss, that is up to 50 amperes and it can clock runs on a few milliamps. So the power taken and the power delivered from the battery. The, the energy source which is in the power tool machines taking <laughs> up to 50 amperes. But the batteries, the energy source, in the car, which is taking only few milliamps. So that is the ability of these two different devices in delivering the current. Battery chemistry is involved in metacid batteries. So it is one of the oldest rechargeable batteries. You can recharge the energy after discharging. Discharging energy, you can once again recharge the energy level of these batteries. So it is a rapid usable over a large temperature range. So upon temperature increase, increase, it cannot change its performance. So usable over a long temperature range. And also having low specific energy. Specific energy is the energy levels. It is important characteristics for the batteries. So having low specific energy and also limited cycle life. Does not like full discharges. So it won't fully discharge. Because of these characteristics, it can store energy with sufficient charge. That is the gases. First, it needs ventilation. So where it is being used, the electricity batteries, vehicles, boats, uninterrupted power supplies, cars, Lips and also wheelchairs. So, in this way, you can use the metacid batteries. The various types of metacid batteries flooded, that is, flooded type of metacid batteries, liquid electrolytes, the electrolytes of the liquid, and also it needs, it is in need of water for the operation. GL, gel. So, here the electrolyte is gel. What is it? Now it is moving. The slides are moving. Whether it is moving. Slide is moving or not? So you are seeing, you can see the battery chemistries inside of battery chemistries. Are you able to see the battery chemistries, metacid batteries? The slide of battery chemistries.
the types of beta acid batteries flooded gel and AGM. That is absorbent, glass nut, and maintenance free. These are the type of the beta acid batteries. Beta acid batteries come as starter, deep cycle, and a stationary battery. So we can classify beta acid as a so easily it can be charged and having deep cycle and also it is very stationary. The depth of charge, depth of discharge. So discharging quality of beta acid batteries it is so when it is about 100 percent the starter batteries. So the cycle is only from 12 to 15. And it is deep cycle battery. When it is at deep cycle, the cycle is increased up to 200. So when the discharge, depth of discharge is 50%, the cycle is increased about, about 500 cycles. So when the depth of discharge is decreased further, that is on 30%, so we have the deep cycle battery, that is the cycle is increased, increased very much, that is 1000. So depth of discharge, start of charge, these are all the important qualities of the batteries. Next battery, nickel cadmium. So it is also rugged due to its strong construction, durable, having long life, having good cold temperature performance. So not affected by the temperature very much. But the cadmium present in the batteries, it is toxic and is prompted regulatory restriction where it is being used in aircraft main battery, UPS, vessels, vehicles, or tools. So in this type of vertical apartness, we have used, we are using the nickel cadmium batteries. Next type, the nickel metal hydride. So it is having 40% higher specific energy. So having increased specific energy than the nickel cadmium. And also it is the toxicity present in the nickel metal hydride batteries is very high. It is, but it is not rugged as nickel cadmium as well as the lead acid batteries. So we are having the difficulties in charging this nickel metal hydride batteries where it is being used consumer products, hybrid vehicles, hybrid vehicles, normally the battery operated vehicles, electric vehicles, and also it, it can be replaced, it can be used replaced by lithium ion and also available in WA and AAA cells. So cells are nothing but, so it is a miniature, miniature of the batteries. It is a basic source, the basic construction of the batteries. The cell is a basic construction of the battery. Lithium batteries, types of lithium batteries. So it is of lithium. So having metallic size, we have lithium metallic and lithium ion. So in lithium ion, so the inter intercalated lithium. So in this way, we can classify lithium and lithium ion batteries. Lithium batteries is non-rechargeable. Non-rechargeable. So we can only use one time of one charging. Where it is being used in the hot face makers, different system, instrumentation, oil building. So in these cases, we are using this lithium metallic batteries. Lithium ion batteries rechargeable. Being used in mobile phones, laptops, power tools, and electric power lines. Rechargeable batteries, lithium ion. Lithium ion systems. It is available from 1991, replacing the nickel. Cadmium. You can replace nickel cadmium by this lithium cobalt batteries and also lithium M batch. Nickel M batch can also be replaced by lithium cobalt battery system. Nickel manganese cobalt. It is having high specific energy being used in power tools and also in medical instruments, e bikes, LB batteries. Lithium phosphates, LIFE, so having the paras, paras elements, it is lithium phosphates, so having long life cycle, enhanced safety, that has low specific energy. So, specific energy is very important quality of the batteries. Lithium phosphate is having low specific energy. Specific energy means, so how can it, it can store the energy? How can, up to 
how much it can store the energy, the electric energy, or in the form of chemical energy being used in UPS and UPS. Lithium polymer. So it uses a solid electrolyte. The electrolyte is normally the electrolyte is of liquid or gaseous, but here it is using solid electrolytes. And it requires 50 to 1600 degrees Celsius of the temperature to attain conductivity. So at at the temperature of 260 only, it can start its conductivity. Modern lithium polymer includes gel electrolytes can be built on lithium cobalt, lithium phosphate, and lithium manganese platforms. So various types of lithium polymer type batteries. So let us say batteries. So two volts per cell nominal. CD is 2.1 cell. So for a cell, the uh, voltage is 2.1 volt. For lithium, uh, nickel cadmium and nickel NOH, it is 1.2 volt per cell. The official rating is 1.25 volt per cell. Lithium ion it is increased, it is 3.6 volt per cell. What are the safety concerns we have to consider with lithium ion? It is microscopic metal particles and also it can puncture the separator. Separator means uh, which are separating the ions, the charged particles. It can be punctured, it can puncture the separator and leading to an electrical short circuit, possibility of electric short circuit with lithium ion batteries. It is having modern cells with them. Modern cells with ultra thin separators and also it is more susceptible to impurities. It is it is preventing impurities than the older designs with lower ampere edge ratings. So ampere edge rating is number of ampere hours. Number of ampere hours for battery when it is being charged and it is charged. So here in lithium ion batteries, we have external protection circuits which cannot stop a thermal runaway. In case of overheating battery, no device to non-combustible surface. The lithium ion can move. There is a cooling surrounding area with water. So there is a provision of water surrounding the battery consumption. So chemicals to use fire and are allow battery to burn out. There is also we have to use the ventilation of ventilation in a room. So packaging and configuration of the batteries. Battery types are various batteries. Types are F, E, D, C. So based on the size, we can classify the batteries up here. F, E, D, C, E. A, 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 4A, 4.5 volt battery, 9 volt battery, 18650, 2660. So in this way, we can categorize the battery formats. The size, the size in MR, 33 into 90 for the type batteries. Similarly, we have different sizes for various batteries. And the history for these batteries. So starting from 1896, we are using the batteries. At the time, we are using the FTI batteries for lantern purpose and also radio. And then it is being replaced by nickel battery. So on various times, we are changing the batteries, different batteries. Now we are using larger size lithium ion batteries. So in this, nowadays, we are using lithium ion for electric vehicle purpose and for other purpose also, we are using the lithium ion batteries of being very larger in size. So the construction, the construction sir, is cylindrical. And the classic packaging surrounding which the chemical formation we have a classical packaging for primary and secondary cells. So it is of high mechanical stability. It is, it is well surrounded by the high mechanical stable materials and they have a long life. It holds internal pressure without deforming case. 
for having internal pressure, it can resist the temperature and also the surrounding pressure, the air pressure. So in this manner, it is very, it is very much internal pressure in the system, the environmental pressures. And also inefficient use of space. The space is inefficiently being used here. Metal housing adds to the metal housing, adding additional weight to the battery. So in this way, we can say this is inefficient. So taking more space, using more space, the button cell batteries, the consumption of button cell batteries, the very tiny level size batteries, also known as fine cells, small size, easy to start. So mainly reserved as primary batteries in watches and watches. In watches and watches, we are using these button type cells. It is rechargeable button cells, but not allowing fast charging. Fast charging is not allowable in button batteries. Only limited new developments. It must be recovered from children. Comfort is followed. So being very tiny, so we have to protect these batteries to be swallowed by children. Prismatic cell. So it is also very well used of space. Best usage of space allows flexible design. Higher manufacturing costs, less, less efficient thermal management, and also shorter life. So, which one, uh, which battery is of mechanically very strong? So, that is that is very much usable. The only disadvantage is so it is taking more space. Pouch, pouch, also, pouch uh, shape also, we have the batteries. It is light and cost effective to manufacture. Pouch type cells. Simple, flexible, and lightweight solutions. It is exposure to humidity and also hot temperature. So because of this, the light is very short and clear. Loss of stack pressure and it is swelling due to gassing. So gassing due to gassing, it can swell. It can increase the space. The occupying space is increased. The design must include allowance for eight to ten percent swelling. So up to 8 to 10 percent swelling is allowable, with which we cannot change the performance of the battery. So best is cell design. So considering this all type of design, which one is better? Best cell design. Cylindrical cell has a good cycling ability, long life, economical to manufacture, no expansion during charge and discharge. So having high metallic external support. So it cannot expand during charging and discharging. And also some of the disadvantages, heavy. It is very heavy. It creates air gaps and multi-cell parts and not suitable for slim designs. So occupying more space it cannot be used for slim designs. Prismatic cell. So it allows compact design. The design is very compact. It is mostly used for single cell parts. So whenever we have single cell parts. Disadvantage, it is less efficient in thermal management. So easily exposed to the external temperature and possible shorter cycle. The cycle is, the life is very shorter. It can be more expensive to make. So being very less, it is the case. Manufacturing cost of this cell is very expensive. Pouch back, it is also, the advantage is very light. The weight is very light and also it is cost effective to manufacture. It is also, Easily exposure to humidity and the heat. That's why the light is easily shortened. So in this way, we can make advantages and disadvantages. The comparison over these three types of cells: cylindrical, prismatic, and functional. Then connection based upon the connections, how to how we can compare the performance of the cells. So series connections, suppose here we have four, four cells, four cells of 1.2 volt rating connected in series. So adding cells in a string increases the voltage. So adding different cells of same capacity, which increases the voltage rating and also, but maintaining the same current. In series we have, the current is same but the voltage is being increased. So connecting different cells of same rating, we can increase the voltage levels, maintaining the same current level. Suppose fault string, 
all these things. So connecting any one additional battery of different voltage rotation. So here we have points is voltage. So connecting one point to voltage. So in which only one point is voltage, which is being connected in series with the cells. So here we cannot get the full voltage available. Because the current rating. So for maintaining the same current rating only, so we can maintain, we can increase the voltage levels. So having points is voltage. So the voltage, full voltage is not being available here. So, it's, so it is called as faulty string. Faulty cell lowers overall voltage and causing early cutoff. Weaker cell is stressed most. So here the weaker cell means the points is voltage. So comparing all these three, all, the, all these four, the points voltage is weakest. So it is being stressed most and also start with the various voltage. So in this way, so for increasing the voltage levels and also increasing the life of the batteries, we have to use the bushing connections. That is connecting in series batteries of same voltage. Parallel connection. Connecting parallel. Suppose we are in a, in a need of connecting batteries in parallel. 1.2 volt batteries are connected in parallel. In parallel, all batteries are 1.2 voltage and 1000 milliampere current rating. So connected in parallel. So faulty parallel. Here also the faulty parallel that means so connecting one different batteries, which is different from the 1.2 volt batteries, and also having different current ratings. So it is known as faulty parallel part. So what are the significance of good parallel and the faulty parallel? Good parallel that allows high current. So the current is increasing and also maintaining the same voltage. So having connected in parallel, the voltage is same, but it allows the high current. But here, the weak cell reduces the current. So weak cell, which is different from the 1.2 volt batteries. So it reduces current and the forces, the hazard is shorter. That is any short means it poses the hazard as to the whole system. Series parallel. So we can connect batteries using both series as well as parallel connections. So we have two cells are connected in series and two cells are in parallel. So most of the battery packs have the series parallel configurations. So here the cells must be matched. So upon the constraint. That is why these conditions only we can use this series parallel connection. Next, charging, discharging, and storing. So charging, charging means here the energy conversion is from electrical energy to chemical energy. So electrical energy, we are getting the supply from electric, electric supply. It is being stored in batteries, batteries in chemical form. So that is called charging. So charging. The electrical energy is transforming into the chemical energy. Discharging the stored chemical energy, the stored chemical energy inside the batteries, which is being transformed into electricity. So connecting to the external circuits, it transforms the chemical energy into electrical energy. So charging transforms the electrical energy to chemical energy. Discharging transforms the chemical energy into the electrical energy storing so storing the energy in the chemical chemical chemicals electrolytes present in the batteries we can store the energy so before after charging after after charging we can store the energy in the electrolyte present in the batteries during discharging we can transform the stored chemical energy into electrical energy so in this way we can define charging discharging and storing the right way to charge lead acid batteries. So, how to what a right way? So, taking a graph with respect to current versus time. The current means that time the current taken by the batteries with respect to time. So, here the water line shows the charge current, charge and how the charge current varies with respect to time and the lines, the continuous lines represents the voltage per cells, how the voltage per cells vary with respect to time. So normally, so what will be the first performance? Both performance are current and voltage with respect to time. So 
will charge to 2.4 volt per cell. So after 2.4 volt charge per cell, then we have to apply the topping of charges. This is the best way for increasing the performance of the batteries. Similarly, 2.25 volt per cell float charge. So up to 2.25 volt per cell, we have to charge, we have to float charge. So it will compensate for this charge. Overcharging causes corrosion and short life. So beyond which, beyond the limits, we, we have to stop the charging, charging off. So if it continues, it will lead to corrosion and short life of the batteries. Similarly, we can help the right way to charge nickel MH batteries. So here we can show the performance of nickel MH batteries, temperature, voltage with respect to state of charge. So what is state of charge? So it is a ratio, ratio of the remaining capacity of the battery with respect to the full load capacity. So it is a state of charge, so something called the ratio between the remaining. So after charging, the remaining capacity present in the batteries with respect to the full load capacity of the battery when it is fully loaded. So charge to 70 percent charge. So with the graph, we can have a knowledge of the charge to 70 percent. So charging 70 percent is efficient for NIMH batteries. Then battery gets warm. After that, it is getting the warm. Full charge detection typical with battery faulty dispatched. Return time full charge detection required. Temperature sensing is required for safety. So here we have to consider the temperature involved in the batteries. So it is not considered in the previous batteries, which are batteries, but here we have to consider the temperature in the cell. So we are taking the current current taken by the batteries with respect to time. The straight line shows the voltage per cell. And also the dotted lines shows the charge graph. So what will be the best performance of lithium ion cells? So we have to charge the cell up to 4.2 volts. It absolutely no triple charge. Cells must relax after charge. Occasional topping charge is allowed. So occasionally we can Hello, the topping of charges. But initially, it's to be charged. So, based on this, Mendoza it needs an occasional 14 hour saturation charge. So, 14 hour charging is needed for Mendoza acid batteries. Mendoza acid cannot be fast charged. The fast charging is 8 hours. So, it cannot be cannot. Fastly charge the lead acid batteries. Charging and discharging faster than one hour, that is one C rates. It causes stress in lead acid batteries. One of the conditions to be followed when we are charging and discharging the lead acid batteries. Chargers must be charged even a faulty battery. So charging the kind of charges with the batteries. Chargers fill the battery. Then call the charge, overcharge means to faulty charges. This charge must be directed to a proper load. So during charges, it must be safely charged. And also it is fully charged the battery. So after filling the total capacity of the battery, we have to charge the battery. Overcharging means to a faulty charger. Due to faulty charger, it may be possible of overcharging. And also the discharging is properly directed to proper load. So avoiding the short circuit connections, it should be properly connected to the load. So what is the analogy of the battery charging and the discharging? So we can make analogy with the water flow. Water flow stops when the tank is full. So no water is allowed. Suppose we are filling the water, uh, water from the ground level. So here the water flow stops when the tank is full. So this overflowing. Similarly, all the mechanisms are overlapping. Overcharging. Overcharging. 
points and also placing a brick in a tank reduces the capacity so it is the prevention the prevention for charging also reducing the capacity of the battery so in this way we can make analogy with the water flow with the energy flow taking place in batteries so ultra fast charging batteries so charging batteries which are taking less than 30 minutes they are categorized as ultra fast charging batteries ultra fast charging only works with the perfect battery fast charging process and due stress and it is shortening the life fast charging so even though we are getting the fast charging it will make reducing the shorten life of the batteries for best results we have to use the charge of 0.5 to 1 c rate as a high speed train can only go as fast as the tracks allow like this a battery must be in good condition to accept fast charge so it is to it is to should be adapted to the fast charging that type of batteries only would be sustainable for fast charging so here the batteries are being charged without wires so induction we do mutual induction uh, here the batteries are being charged all inductive charging it resembles a transmitter and receiver so there is no connection between transmitter and receiver the getting signals from transmitter it is the receiver gets charged received magnetic signals are rectified and also regulated transmitter and receiver combine power needs inductive charging is 70% efficient and produces speed so comparing with the wire wired charging inductive charging is 70% uh, having the magnetic losses between transmitter and receiver it is only efficient 70% efficiency there is 70% efficiency it also produces speed what are the advantages of the charge without wires so it is convenience and no contact here helps in cleaning sterilization no exposed metals no corrosion no shock and the spark hazard these are all the advantages we can take in the wireless charging disadvantages power limit runs charge time charge time is being increased and also generated heat stresses battery the battery is being stressed by the heat radiation that is we have to consider it is complex only 25 percentage of more expensive in compatible standards and the disadvantages of the wireless charging batteries charging at high and low temperature here we are charging at high so fully the charging level is high but at low temperatures what are the various battery types let us see batteries nickel battery nickel mg batteries and lithium ion batteries so so many temperature charging temperatures varying temperatures discharging temperatures in all in these batteries and it charge at this side for this three type of batteries so it charges at 0.3 c and less below 3 c voltage to limit by 3 millivolt the resistance so that is greater than 30 resistances so in this way we can compare the charging at high and low temperatures charging has a reduced temperature range than the charging so in charging the temperature range is reduced than the charging charging from usb ports so in this way also we can make charges over batteries the universal field is first introduced in 1990 this is a five dimensional data port that allows that also provides 5 volts at 500 amps so due to usb ports we can make 5 volts we can maintain 5 volts at the current rate of 500 milliamp the charges small single cell lithium ion using which we can charge lithium ion cells here fully charged it may not be possible on large packs so limited charging is being made on the usb ports overloading may cause force to disconnect that is the disadvantage of the charging using usb ports discharging methods so how to discharge that is how to convert the chemical energy into electrical energy it is the capacity of the battery is in milli ampere hours ampere hour, number of milli ampere hours with respect to number of cycles higher loads and pulses increase stress on the battery higher loads using usb usb ports whenever the load is increased the pulses increase there will be increase in the stress on the battery Big cells in a chain suffer most on load. Fast charge cells must be matched for higher current discharge. These are all the 
performance is based during this charging. Fully charged before storing. Delta six should be fully charged before storing. Partial discharge causes sulfation. So formation of the sulfates. Self discharge increases with the heat. Topping charge increases much. So that is the, the charging methodology we have to follow on delta six batteries. For nickel cadmium, nickel NH, no preparation needed, but can be stored, charged, or empty. So it can be stored, uh, charged, or in, in the case of empty. So both is manageable with charge or without charge. We can make, we can use the nickel cadmium and nickel NH. It means exercise after long storage. What about lithium ion? It stores the energy at 30 to 60 percentage state of charge. 30 to 60 percent of state of charge. So as I already told, state of charge is nothing but the ratio between the remaining capacity of the battery to the capacity of the battery when it is at full load. So in this temperature and this type of SOC only, it can be operated. Concerns with lead. So, lead can enter the body by inhalation of lead. So, the lead dust touching the mouth with contaminated hands. So, it is contaminates and harmful to the physical body of human being. Children and present women are most vulnerable to lead exposure. Lead affects the child's growth, causes brain damage, harms kidneys, and so in this way, we have to be very hazardous over. The usage of lead acid batteries. We are limited. Health concerns with cadmium. Workers at Nickel Cadmium Manufacturing Plant in Japan exhibited health problems from cadmium exposure. So, what are the effects of cadmium exposure? It can be absorbed through skin by touching a spilled battery and it causing the kidney damage. So, cadmium causing the kidney damage. It will affect the kidney parts of the body. Exercise caution when working with damaged batteries. The damaged batteries are exposed to exposed to lead and as well as the cadmium, so which will be very harmful for the human being. Transporting lithium ion. So lithium ion batteries using the transporting. Most failures occur by improper packaging. So, looking at patterns. So, packaging is very important. So, without the proper packaging, it will become the failures and the handling at the airports, and in parts of us, that is where there are the incidents at 2006. Lithium iron is not the only power battery. Primary lithium lead, nickel, alkaline can also cause fires. So, possibility of firing also. In batteries, battery periods have gone down since 2006. So, using more lead and cutting batteries, using more chemicals, we are facing problems from 2006 onwards. We frequently ask questions on charging and discharging of batteries. What lead acid batteries, nickel based, and lithium ion batteries? Can I harm battery by incorrect use? Yes, for intercept batteries. Yes, but do not store partially charged. So we have to store fully charged for nickel based. There is no overheat. And also, it will not overcharging also. But lithium ion it should be kept in full condition. Then during partial charging, charge fully to prevent sulfation. So here the sulfation formation is prevented. In lithium and lead acid batteries, the nickel based charge nickel cadmium and nickel NH fully, it should be fully charged. So, partial charging is not allowed in nickel based. Partial discharge is fine in lithium, lithium ion batteries. So, in this way, we can compare the lead acid, nickel based, and lithium ion batteries. So, what the temperatures we have to measure for this type of batteries? So, in these categories, we can classify. Acid, nickel based, and lithium ion batteries. So, increasing the life of battery life. 
battery fade cannot be stopped but slowly. So we can increase the battery life. Lithium ion provides 300 to 500 full discharge cycles. It is 300 to 500 full discharge cycles. Capacity is the leading health indicator of a battery. The capacity drop to 80 to 70 percentage mass end of life. The capacity of 100, 100 to 80 percentage. You can see the capacity is in healthier condition. So beyond which flowing which we can say the life is being reduced. Difference between capacity and SOC. Capacity and SOC determines the runtime, but the recipients are not labeled. The capacity is the capacity of charging, capacity of charging and uh, holding the energy in the chemical form. But SOC is the SOC is the ratio between the remaining charge, remaining charge capacity and the battery with respect to the capacity of the battery when it is fully loaded. So in this way, we can differentiate capacity and the state of charge of the batteries. Limited capacity in ampere hours, it includes empty stored energy and inactive parts. But the SOC includes only stored energy and inactive part. It is not including the empty, the empty capacity. So considering all these three, empty capacity, we are considering empty capacity stored energy and inactive cases, but in SOC, we are only considering the stored energy and inactive parts. Avoiding deep discharging. So deep discharging means it percentage the top charge. The number of discharge cycles of lithium ion in nine minutes. It is 300 to 500. So when, uh, by decreasing the depth of charge, the cycles is being increased. So by increasing the cycles, we have to decrease the percentage of depth of discharge. So only at 100 percentage of discharge, 100 percent of discharging, the number of discharge cycles is within the limits. It is 300 to 500. That is the best thing we need. So upon fully depth of discharge, we are decreasing the number of cycles, the number of discharge cycles of the batteries. It will prevent deep discharges, charge more often. So, for preventing deep discharges, deep discharges, we have to charge more often. Only apply a tiberial full discharge for calibration. Nickel cadmium and nickel NOH benefit from periodic cycling. So, keeping the battery cool, temperature maintenance. So temperature for 40 percent charge and 100 percent charge. So at zero degree Celsius, when we are charging the batteries by 40 percentage, it is 98 percentage. But at 100 percentage, it is being decreased. The capacity is decreased, 94 percentage. When the temperature increases, temperature increases, the efficiency during 40 percentage and 100 percentage, the efficiency in 40 percentage charge. At 25 degrees Celsius, we have slight degrees. But in 100 percentage charge, at 25 degrees Celsius, it is 80, 80 degrees, 80, 80 percent only. So when we are increasing the temperature, we cannot get 100 percentage benefits during full, full charge. So after three months, we can, we can have a charge a performance of 60 percent only. So increasing, in this way, the increasing temperature is affecting the performance of the batteries. Charge levels, the comparison of charge level, number of full discharge cycles, capacity of full charge. The battery loose and loans. Just way to charge for lead acids, nickel base, and lithium. For lead acids, apply occasional full 14 hour charge to prevent saltation. So occasionally, Charging 14 hours for preventing. So in this case, in order to prevent sulfation, so we need to 14 hours charging. That is that is nickel base avoid leaving battery in charger and ready for base. So without charges, charge making, 
the country is charge making also it can use chemical waste batteries. The partial charge being partial charge is fine, and also the cell voltage is being preferred. So the full condition also we can operate in the MIR. This charge, this charging. So do not cycle starter batteries. Do not cycle starter batteries in later acids. Avoid full discharge. So only this is the to fully discharge the red acid batteries. Nickel-based batteries do not over discharge at a high load. Means at high load, it should not be discharged. It will lead to cell reversal and causing the short circuit device. Disposal. So we cannot dispose the red acid batteries. Recycle instead. That is a recycle. Lead is a lead is a toxic. Being lead is a toxic, we cannot dispose the materials. Nickel materials. Nickel based. It is, it should not be also disposed. So having cadmium, it should not be also disposed. Lithium ion, it is environment friendly and can be disposed at low volume. So this day we can compare the three type of batteries. Charging, discharging, and disposal. The battery is the energy storage device that is low to fill. Holds limited capacity and has a defined lifespan. So that battery will use a well defined good performance battery. As long as the battery lies on an electrochemical process, limitations provide. The ideal battery does not yet exist. So there is no ideal batteries. It does this making a comeback. Lithium ion replaces nickel based batteries. Lithium ion or EPS. The first lithium ion double since the 1990 How far batteries can be used in electric batteries? So, batteries used in electric vehicles. Batteries do not die suddenly, but gradually fade with age. The pass is the leading health indicator. Battery diagnostics has not advanced as quickly as other technologies. The challenge is in assessing the battery before performance degradation becomes noticeable. Rapid tests provide 80 to 90 percent correct prediction. So, testing is important when we are analyzing the performance of the battery. The capacity of the battery. The capacity measurement by a full discharge is still the most reliable method. So, fully discharging is. Efficient method when we are increasing the life of the batteries. So EV sets, electric battery sets the upper boundary of battery feasibility. So being the main energy source, the electric vehicles are all depending on the battery energy sources. Price and longevity dictate how far the battery can go. Powering fines, ships, and airplanes makes the little sense. So now nowadays being used in electric vehicles. The need of batteries is increasing on one and down. The calorific values, that is energy, energy transform, energy transformation in various kind of storage devices. So fuels, the various energy storage devices, starting from diesel, gasoline, body fat, ethanol, so various energy storage devices in which what about the battery? So here we have batteries, nickel MH batteries. 90 watt hours per kg. So, per kg, one kg weight of nickel energy battery is having 90 watt hour of energy storing energy capacity. So, lead acid battery is about 40 WH per kg. For one kg of lead acid batteries, it is 40 WH energy rate. Similarly, we can replace the nickel MOH battery and it has batteries by supercapacitors. So having the same performance like batteries, we can use the supercapacitors. But here it is only about 5 WH per kg. One kg is uh, having of 5 WH energy of storage capacity. Various energy materials using which we are extracting energy. So, with this, let's conclude our presentation today. If you have any doubts, 
कविता ना सके फर्मसेस Only concentrating on the battery technologies. Not on the electric vehicles. We are only concentrating on these performance. And how to improve it? So current research. So current research. So so increasing the. Of the batteries without affecting the environment, that is very very important. So having here, we are using lithium and cadmium. So they are very very hazardous to human being and also nature. So without affecting the nature, we want to improve the battery performance. So in that way, we can go and use the batteries for research. Normally, we are in the mode of usage of batteries in the electric vehicles. So. into over that so how to protect the environment without affecting the human being how to improve the life of the batteries in the electric vehicles so in that way if our research is in that way it will be very beneficial to the society Thank you, all participants. Thank you, all. Thanks to Dr. Rajshree sir for this wonderful uh, session. Uh, thanks to all the participants. Um, today also there is a uh, hundred participants involved in this session. Is there any queries? You can mail. I'll share with uh, Dr. Raj Sikhan sir's mail mail ID in this FTP group. Once again, I thank Dr. Raj Sikhan sir and all the participants. Tomorrow, tomorrow sessions. The resource person is Dr. Ravi Darni. The time is same, ten a.m. I'll share this uh, Zoom link in our FTP group. If you have any doubts, you can uh, comment in our whatsapp group ftp thank you thank you all the feedback link will be shared at the end of the day only that is for the day friday minimum 80 percentage attendance is must to get this certificate thanks thank you thank you all the participants